Welcome, my dear viewer, to Dr. Paul Kibicho YouTube channel. It gives me pleasure once again to come and talk to you on an issue that made me quite excited today when uh, the word of God was being shared by his servant. And it was the, the, the theme of the sermon was on restoration to true uh, stewardship. And we got our readings today from the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verses 1 to 18, and Romans, chapter 12, verses 3 to 8. And what, what I learned today made me to be very, very happy and excited. And we realized that uh, if we are going to get God's blessings, we need first of all to appreciate who God is in our hearts. Majority of us people, we only assume that God is good when things are working out our way. More often than not, most of us people, we do complain for what God has not been able to accomplish to our lives. Unfortunately, we forget that even being alive is a blessing from God. Being alive, breathing freely, inhaling and exhaling, it takes the heart of God. And this far, the far that you have come, the Lord has been faithful to you. So the question is, and this is what made me to ask myself a very, or one simple question. Are we faithful to our God? God has done so many things to us, but are we faithful to him? As the book of Malachi chapter 3 verses 118 says. If we are not faithful, then are we good stewards? We must appreciate that whatever we have belongs to God. Even your very life belongs to God. The children that you have belongs to God. Everything that you have belongs to God. But most of us people, we complain. We've been complaining, me included. I'm not an, excep I'm not an exception to this. But uh, I thank God that the word of God came up so strongly today. And it, he taught us, the servant of the Lord taught us on what we call the, free, the four principles of stewardship. The first principle was the principle of ownership as can be found in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, that everything belongs to God. You can read that during your free time, even Psalms 24, verses 21, and Psalms 89, verses 11. So the principle of ownership, we must appreciate that our very existence, our lives, and anything else that we claim to have belongs to God. So the principle of ownership basically means that we belong to God and therefore when we are serving God in our various capacities, we do it to our God. And we should therefore do it wholeheartedly in full realization and recognize, recognize, uh, recognition that we are alive because of God. What, are, what about the principle of responsibility? We must be responsible people. A responsible person ensures that everything that he or she sets to do must be, do, must be done in a responsible manner. Even when serving God, we must be men and women who are responsible to their deeds and actions. Very, very, very important. So, and I hope that all of us, as I continually talk to you, all of us, wherever we are, all of us in whatever circumstances, we must appreciate that we need to be very, very responsible. That whatever we do in this life, we must do it in a responsible manner. If God has given you a family, can you become a responsible family? Can you have a responsible, can you take your responsibility for that matter? Can you do what, what, what you're supposed to do? Because God calls us to be responsible. So restoration to true stewardship means becoming responsible to our families, to our employers, even to our God. Even serving God, we need to be very responsible. We do things that make God happy, that fights us, get favor from him. What about the principle of accountability? When you have 10,000 shillings, you, are, you appreciate that you tithe, but when you have a million, giving a hundred thousand shillings, you feel it. You feel that uh, that's too much. But you forget who, who, it is the the same God who has guarded you. It is the same God who has given you this business that has given you the proceeds of one million shillings. And therefore, we need to be accountable. Accountable here means that we have a role to play, even when it comes to giving God His tithes and offerings. And remember, tithing is a command. It is not. Uh, uh, tithing, tithing is not optional. It's a command. And the Bible, if you read, get your free time, read the book of Matthew 25, verses, 12, verses 21, that says, Well done, you good and faithful servant. Will God see these words? When the, your days come to an end in this world of God, 
Will God call you? Will God tell you these words? Well done, you good and faithful servant. Have you been, have you been faithful? God has been so faithful to you. He has given you this life. Don't you worry. You may not be where you wanted to be, but if it is in God's plan and desire, you'll find yourself there. But meanwhile, are you accountable to whatever God gives to you? How many of you people don't even give God, even, even offering, leave alone even tithe? We have been crying. Most of us people have been crying that we are not blessed the way we are supposed to. But then, how blessed can you be by, the, by God if we are not, you have not been accountable to whatever God has given unto you? May we from today become good stewards. May we from today become accountable. What about the principle of reward? God has rewarded you with life. God has rewarded you with so many things. God has been so good to you this long. But some of us people, we always complain. We assume that uh, things happen the way they do because of ABCD. But we need to appreciate that God has given us a reward of being alive. And therefore, we also require to reward God by doing what, what is good to him. We should avoid something that makes God feel bad in heaven. We, at all times, we should also remember to extend our hearts more so to those people who are needy. We need even to take a bit of time to pray for the sick, to pray for the orphans, for the widows, for the widowers, for, for those people in jail, for those people who are in for the remedies. We need to take a bit of time to pray and tell God, thank you, because this past Jehovah you've been faithful to us. And then the servant of God went ahead and taught, talked about what we call the spiritual ATM. We all have an ATM. Those people who have got banks, bank accounts, we have ATMs. You can't go to an ATM if at all you know that you had not deposited money into your bank account. As a matter of fact, an ATM is a conduit of what you have kept into the bank through using what you call technology. So you can only access that which you have in the bank. So see, if you don't have anything in that particular bank, you cannot go slotting your card in because by the end of the day, the card will not give you money. So you, got, you get money because you are deposited. So we are saying you cannot withdraw if you had not deposited. In the spiritual ATM, if you have not deposited into it, how do you withdraw from it? There, are, there is a price involved. So in order for you to have money in your bank account, you must have done something that gave you those proceeds. You need to read during your free time the book of 1 Kings 17, chapter 17, verses 2 to 6. And the Bible is telling us that obedience is better than sacrifice. So those people who have been able to honor God in their various ways and in their various assets and incomes and what have you, they, they normally get what we call rewards from, the, from God. And if you want to know how God works, in the, the, if you read in that particular book, 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 2 to 6, the Bible is telling us that Elijah was fed by ravens. And you know, you, know, you can imagine ravens carrying meat and bread. So you withdraw blessings from God out of obedience. So if you are obedient before God, that is what God will do. Naaman was healed. Remember Naaman because he felt himself to be so senior and he felt that he ought to be highly regarded. He had actually refused to take commands when he was told where to go and wash deep himself seven times. So you see, unless you obey, you can only get the proceeds, the benefits of God's spiritual ATM if you obey. And that is what made Naaman to get healed because finally he obeyed. So those people who don't obey God, they don't get their blessings. This is what we call, now we are going to look at at least four things. We have what we call obedience in attendance. So it is not good for you to be having what we call uh, online service. Go to go, go, go to church. The pastor ins insisted, he was very emphatic, that you need to go to church. Obedience in attendance. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 25. How often do you attend church services? There is a blessing in attending a church service. You have that fellowship. You may even tithe and give your offering using what we call the available platforms. But the presence of attendance, the ministry of attendance is very, very important. The other thing is giving, tithing and offering. Mm -hmm. Remember, plan one, God ha you, ha you can only have two plans, we were told by the pastor. Plan one, 90% and God as your partner. So God only wants 10% of whatever you make. So imagine, so if you give God 10% and God is letting you remain with 90%, you become partners. So 90% and God as your partner. Or alternatively, you get plan 2, 100%, 
you and you alone. And you, your guess is as good as mine where that business will take you. God is testing you on the obedience of the above. We have what we call, remember, when we talk about tithing and offering, we have what we call <laughs> definite portion for designated praise for designated purpose. Oh ho! So when we talk about tithing and offering, it is for death. There's a definite portion which is 10% for designated place, the place of your worship for a designated purpose. Note that. So then we have what we call T. That this, this, <laughs> this acknowledges that it is by God's grace that I have received this. So we need to appreciate that we need to acknowledge that this far it is because God has been so good to us. Not because we've been able to meet his commandments. Not because we've been so faithful to him. Not because things have been working out well uh, with our behavior as far as the word of God is concerned. But God acknowledges his grace to us when we have obeyed him. Then we have what we call the ministry. Ministry. The blessings and talents that you possess. God wants to meet you serving him. So you see, because God has called you with a specific talent and blessings from him, you need to serve God. So how many of us serve God? Some of us people, we are very busy looking for money. Fine, it is good. We all have money. Me included. But by the end of it all, one day we shall leave this universe. We have seen, we have witnessed, we have been to barriers, and we have seen people dying, and we have seen people leaving us. The question is, where will you go? So God has given you the blessing and talents that you possess so that you may use them for the ministry of his work. So I'm calling upon all of you people. You need to ask yourself, have you been a good steward? Yes. How often do you go to visit sick people in hospital? Or the last time that you went to hospital was when you had your brother admitted there. When was the last time you went to, to visit Rimadis? When is the last time that you went to a children's home? Or to a home for the aged and you supported them? When did you last day go and pay a visit to the less fortunate? What kind of a steward are you? If God was to come today, would you be among, would you walk down the aisle and say, Jehovah, here I am? Will you be among the chosen that will serve and see God in eternity? We need to reflect. Because in, surely we must serve God. Surely God has blessed us this far. Surely we exist because of him. So nobody can claim to be where he or she is because of being good. It is by God's grace that we are all alive. So I call upon all of you, my dear viewers, to become good stewards of the word of God. Let's remember that God has called us for a purpose. And you are alive today because God is not yet finished with you. Can we serve God to the best of our knowledge? And so that when you go to heaven, this verse made me feel it. Eh? So that when you go to God's kingdom, God can say these words. I like these words very, very much. And it is important that uh, you too, you think about these words. Will God call you a faithful? Will you be among those people to be called faithful servants? That you fought a good fight? Yes. That, well, that when you go to God's kingdom, that will call you a faithful servant. That's, a very, that's something to ponder. That's something to think about. What about this principle of accountability? Well done. In the book of Matthew 25, 21, well done, you good and faithful servant. Will you be a faithful servant of the Lord? Let's meditate on those words. Let's become good stewards. And I know when we do that, God's blessings will follow us all the days of our lives. May God bless you. Shalom, shalom, shalom.